Hey everybody! Today, Rado runs through six castles. But before I get going, please turn your subtitles on to the Klingon channel so that when I make rules, Goose, you'll know what they are. And if you've done that, well then, welcome to the 12th century. We're in Portugal, which is newly found independence, and the king has decreed he wants to expand the and exploit the land as much as possible. So we're going to be building castles, cultivating landscapes, and even going on pilgrimages to score lots of points, because we are the lords and ladies charged with the growth of this new country. And so, I've got the game set up. We always start out here off of this central tile, which is a two-sided tile. We've got this one face up. Each player has two landscape tiles that we'll be playing and expanding over the course of the game. We have our production tiles, one of which we've already chosen that determines how we're going to start developing and cultivating the land. There's mine. Here's Jen's over here. I need to expand into, I, I'm not quite sure what you're going to call this, wheat fields, let's call it. Jen, she needs to expand into um, green fields, uh, you know, green pastures, I'm going to call it. Or actually, I guess uh, those are trees. Potentially? Anyway, uh, we've got our starting goals for cultivation and development of the land. We've got our starting land. We've got our land we're going to expand with. We've got some workers. We've got some discs that represent our dominion over various things. We have a couple of coins. Um, we need five of these to get one point at the end of the game. An interesting history tidbit, at this time, the coin, the official coin of Portugal, was so soft, people could snap it in half, and that's how they gave change. And so that's why, by default, we have half coins. Um, which we need five of them to get one point. Okay, anyway, we also have a secret goal in addition to the three public goals, and there were plenty more charters that are left out. I am trying to develop sheep fields. Uh, there's potentially two points if I've got more sheep. Although, Jen might beat me at this. We're both competing, it's just only I know sheep are worth two points at the end of the game. Jen's got a secret goal as well. Apparently, barren, um, devastated Earth! is worth one point plus a couple of coins, whoever has the majority of that. So this is something Jen's going to be trying to develop without me figuring it out. And there's always five points to be had, whoever has the most of their workers in the six castles. And we're competing for um, this uh, type of terrain, the, you know, the, the, this wheat, this grain, which is why my cultivation track starts with me trying to get some of that grain. You can see Jen chose one for herself that also gives her a target of that grain. Alrighty, so we've got that, and we are also trying to have the most of our workers, or pilgrims in this case, at these um, crosses, at, you know, these like holy sites. So, these are our goals. This is what we're going to expand. Let's get going. I am the first player. How does it work? Well, on your turn, you're going to do... You're, you're actually... It's kind of interesting. There are almost two games going on simultaneously in Six Castles, which is referenced by this player aid. On your turn, you could do what the rules call a disc action, which means you use your discs. I think that's kind of dumb. I call it a production action, which means on your turn, you can be all about production. Increasing your cultivation and production, and then selling that stuff to castles, and potentially scoring points off of it. Or, you could be all about pilgrimage, which the rules call a worker action. It's a disc action, or a worker action, I call them production actions and pilgrimage because I love alliteration. But anyway, either way, the first thing you're going to do on your turn is play one of your two tiles to the main board. Then, you're either going to send your workers walking around the expanding territory, um, you know, going on pilgrimages, basically, trying to get to churches and crosses so you can get more religious points, and also trying to lay claim on different types of territory with these same people so you can move them around. That's if you're focusing on the move workers around. I think on my first turn, I'm going to do the other thing. I'm going to do production. I'm going to try and increase my production, and maybe... Well, I'm not going to get a chance to sell anything to the castles right now, unfortunately, because none have been built yet. But um, the quicker... I, uh, since I've got a production goal, and there's a production goal out here, I'm going to try and work my way up this as quick as I can. So, how does it work? Well, like I said, whichever type, whether you're doing a production or a pilgrimage, first you play one of my tiles. So I've got two of these. I can put them down, and they have to go adjacent to existing ones. They can't be half adjacent. The, the roads basically have to match up, but you can rotate around however you want. So one of these two things is going to get put into play. Right. So, right, right, right. Um, I think... Well, it's interesting. There's a few things i got to bear in mind. One is, hey, this 
terrain has one of these public targets. Neither of my tiles gives me those sweet, sweet sheep I'm looking for, so I'll have to be on the lookout for them later. So this is interesting. But this is also interesting because it's got a church, and there's already a church out here. I could put this like this to get a couple of churches next to each other, which could be particularly good if I choose to do a pilgrimage action and get one of my pilgrims over to these two churches that I just laid down. So I could go for that, or I could try to up my production. Now, the interesting thing is, we, either of these tiles, when I place them, they've got a bonus. They are going to allow me to increase my production by one, which means um, I will have gotten to the next step, which means I need to be able to develop craggy areas. After I've developed craggy areas, I have to be able to develop sheep areas which I want to do anyway, because it's kind of my goal. Um, and the normally, to be able to make this first jump, I would have to be able to develop these wheat field type areas, these grain areas. But either one of these car, either one of these tiles is going to give me a bonus of jumping up one for free. So I don't have to worry about getting this into play. So I need to think about, how, what do I want to do? And interestingly, Hmm. Mm, yeah. If I do this, I'm potentially making a... And I don't take advantage of these two churches right next to each other. You know what? I was wanting to do my production, but these two churches falling into my lap like this, I think I'm going to go like that. All right. So, I was planning on doing production, putting a tile down and then working on my production, but I'm not going to. I'm going to put a tile down and work on my pilgrimage instead. But, remember, because I put this tile down, I get a bonus, which is jumping up one on my production anyway. Since I'm working on my production, hey, I'll work on Pilgrimage now instead. So, after I place the tile down, I then take one of my workers and put it on one of the hills. Or on, on, on the, I'm sorry, not on one of the hills, on the tile I've just created. I was uh, thinking about production, which is all about hills. The uh, Pilgrimage is all about getting my workers. So, I'm going to take one of my workers and put them right here at this little crossroads. And now, my workers, all the workers I have on the board, these pilgrims, can move around. And the number of times they get to move is equal to the number that I have in the world. Because I've only got one in the world right now, I can move once. I can move from one crossroads to another. If there were more tiles, I could come over here. And ultimately, you know, I might have several workers, which means, hey, because i got two, I could spend two total movements. I could have this guy move one, two, as an example. But at the beginning of the game, I've only got one. I there, He came over here on my starting and I can move him one. And the only place he could move is right here. Which I don't need to. Because after all my workers are done moving, they have the potential to claim terrain. First, they um, you spend all your movement points to move. Then, they can slide off the road into one of the adjacent hills and temporarily take control of that. So I could move him over here and then slide him into this area, this area, this area, or this area. Or I could stay. I don't have to move at all. Which means I could slide him into this area, this area, this area, or this area. And so I'm not even going to bother moving him. I'm just going to slide him over here and lay him down. And that means I control this hill. A hill is one, two, three, or four spaces that are surrounded by a road. So this is a size two hill that has two churches on it. And I control this area now. So, uh, first, I placed a tile. Then, I went on a bit of a pilgrimage and claimed some land with my pilgrim. Now, I get to score religion points based on the number of churches and crosses that all of my workers have access to. This guy has access to two. I've just boomed up one, two, one, two. Now, it takes me a while before I get to two points, and then three, and then four, and then five. But so I'm still, we all have zero points right now. I've just scored a victory point. And um, if I can get more workers, out into religious areas where churches and crosses are, I could be working my way up higher and higher and higher. This is one of the ways to score points over the end of the game. So I've done that. I've you know scored some. I've, I've moved up on the religion track by getting my pilgrims to religious areas. And now the last thing I can do, you know, because um, first was step one. Then you do A or B, and um, you know B B. And uh, the last step of B is. I can take one of my workers and lock in control over certain um, aspects of the world. And that's what this track is over here. It's showing that if 
on my turn, at the end of my turn, I have a worker who has access to two churches, or two castles, or two military tents, or one house, or three Roman milestones, or five of any one type of building, if I want, I have the option of taking that worker, or workers. I might have several workers spread all over the place. And if all of them combined have access to three milestones, I could take one of them off of one of those milestones and put it here to lock in three points. Now, I've got this worker who has access to two churches. So, um, and you can see, this is a one-time thing. I can go on ahead and say, I've locked this in, and now nobody else can ever lock in two victory points for having access to two churches. And since there was that church out there right from the get-go, for all I knew, Jen had churches she could have built, and if she had grabbed that, I would never be able to snag those two points. Now, I have permanently given up one of my workers. I've still got four more, but that's going to make it tougher for me. If I have more of my workers lock in these permanent points, I've got fewer who can go to pilgrimage and score um, various and sundry uh, uh, points on the religious track. So that's something I got to bear in mind. I've given up one of my workers, but I've locked in two points because I developed the land where two churches were. I then went on a pilgrimage to there, got some points, and then locked that in for myself. Now, at the end of my turn, I draw another tile. I hope there's some sheep. There's no sheep. Because remember, I want sheep. And my turn is over. It is now Jen's turn. And let's see, what is she going to do? Alrighty, alrighty. Turns out she did not have a church. So, I didn't necessarily have to rush on that. Um, yeah, that was definitely not necessary for me to do. I mean, I, which is to say I could have left this guy out here um, because, you know, he could have been scoring me more points for more church access throughout the game as long as he stayed here. Um, you know, I, I could, it just could have been passive income, but I gave that up to lock it down because I was afraid. I mean, Jen could have moved somebody in here. Although, since I already kind of had access to this hill, Jen would have had to pay me to move in and move one of her own workers in. But then she could have gone on ahead and claimed that. As an example. So that's why, I mean, I got two, you know, I got, um, what was it? Yeah, I'm sorry, one, two. I moved up two spaces and then I locked this in. But hey, I could still get more workers out there if I want to keep on pushing this. But that means I'd have to give up other stuff. Jen, meanwhile, she's now got to pick which of her tiles she's going to play. And, hmm, hmm, okay, okay, yeah. I think Jen is going to do production. I did some pilgrimages. Jen's going to do some production. She's going to play this tile, which by the way, is going to give her one half coin. Uh, you know, this tile won't give any bonus. There's no bonus here in the center. This is going to give Jen a half a coin. So she's one step closer to a point. Alrighty. And she's going to play this. Now, this tile has a crag on it. If you, uh, which is the foundation of how you build up castles. And we are here to build the six castles. So what that means is, there's really only a couple of rules when you're putting these tiles down. They have to be adjacent to existing tiles, and they have to line up with roads. So you can't do this kind of stuff or this kind of stuff. So that's one rule. The other rule is, if there's a crag on your new tile, and there are crags out there in the world, you have to put them adjacent. So Jen has to go like this or like this, um, because, uh, because we're getting one step closer to being able to build the first of the six castles, because the castles get built in these crags. So Jen has to lay this down in one of two ways. And she'll go ahead and lay it down like that. There she goes. She'll lay it down like that. Okay. So, now, remember, the first thing you do, whether you're doing pilgrimage like me, or production, you put a tile down. Then, if you're going to do production, the tile you instead of putting a worker on the tile you just placed, you look at the tile you just placed. All right, let's go ahead and zoom in on this a little bit. You look at this tile and you pick one of the four hills that this tile is a part of. This this is a hill with all these crags. This is a hill with this house. This is a hill with this forest. And this is a hill with um, you know this barren forest that doesn't produce. Where you know th oh these are, I think this is all of these are olive trees because this produces oil. So um, you know this is just a forest that doesn't produce anything. Uh, right. So Jen could pick any of these four hills and cultivate that land. 
And um, that is what Jen is going to do. She's going to pick this one because it's the biggest hill right now. Je this gives Jen access to uh, this field and this forest. And what that means is she's got to come back over here to her production track. Or at least I call this the production track. The game calls it the discovery or the exploration track. I don't understand why, but, you know, so... Anyway, um, Jen can now move forward on this track for all of these types of resources she can produce. Because she's claiming this area, or she's cultivating this area, she has access to this. This is the next step she needs. So she's just moved forward one on her production track. Now her next step says she needs money to continue to build up her production of goods. This coin she just got, this half coin, she'll spend it to move up again. And now the next step to move up, she needs some of that sweet, sweet grain. Which remember, there's a goal for having most cultivated grain in the game. Now, um, this hill does not have any grain in it, unfortunately. Jen might expand this hill later on, because that could get her access to her next step of grain. But this isn't the sum total of Jen's cultivation or production or exploration track. Jen, as part of setup, got four total tiles. She picked one to be her locked-in beginning, which she's already taken two steps on. Anytime she wants, she can expand this any way she wants. Um, like, say, this one, which has the forest in watch. She could go ahead and expand like that. Or she could expand it like this. Um, you know, or she could... You know, and also, you don't have to go in a straight line. You can um, wind it around depending on your player space. Ultimately, Jen, anytime she wants, she could say, this is her full production goal. That means she has to cultivate land in this particular order to be able to get access to all these different resources that you can score you points over the course of the game. And now, even, no matter how Jen lays these out, and by the way, these aren't locked in place. Jen can change them whenever she wants. They're not locked into place until they have actually been cultivated by this big thing. So right now, Jen's just thinking about how does she want to set up her future cultivation? And she knows she... Well, okay, there's a few things she knows she wants. She definitely wants some of this because... Um, it's in the hill that she's cultivating. She definitely wants these because whoever has the majority of them scores two points at the end of the game. She also wants some of this barren terrain. So, let's see, this has barren terrain, but none of the other stuff. This uh, doesn't have anything she's interested in. This has the forest she's interested in, but uh, none of the wheat or the barren terrain. This has the wheat, but not the forest or the barren stuff. This has the wheat and, oh, olive oil, the wrong stuff. This has barren... Okay, this is the one. This is going to be Jen's next step. And remember, until this gets locked in, until it's actually been cultivated, Jen can change her mind. But she's just going to end put this right here. Right. Now, why did she do all that? Because, like I said, she's stuck. She can't cultivate these areas later on until she claims a hill that has some of this grain, which, like I said, is over here. Here's the deal. She started here, she claimed this, and said, hey, I'm moving forward to this, I'm moving forward again because she paid a coin. She can't move any farther forward, but she still right now has access to this forest. And the way she can mark that is to take one of her little discs and put it further down on the cultivation track. And that means Jen has like temporarily laid claim to this. Um, you know, this is hers uh, for the purposes of sales or scoring or anything she might need. Now, eventually what's going to happen is on a future turn, she's going to produce stuff. She's going to be able to move over here. And as soon as she moves here, she will get to move up here for free because she already claimed it ahead of time. Or anytime she wants. If she's in a situation where she would need to uh, jettison that, she can jettison it. Whereas, if this, is, if this is moved all the way up here, this moving up here means Jen has permanent access to all of these. Right now, Jen has permanent access to both of these and temporary access to this, which she could get rid of, or if she keeps on working her way up, then she can claim permanent. This is the trickiest thing of the game. The way you set up your access to, uh, to goods by production. And the reason you set up your access to goods is because ultimately you want to sell these goods to these castles. This castle wants the grain and wants the lumber, I suppose. Or what you know, whatever... Whatever this symbol is, which the rules never actually say, which is kind of a bummer. Anyway, so that is what Jen did. Jen laid a tile. Then she moved her production forward, um, you know, as far as she could based on the on the 
hill that she claimed from this tile. Plus, she did another little bonus. Now, if Jen wants to, if there were any castles in the world, and there aren't yet, and they had resources that Jen has, right now, Jen has access to this particular good. Which, this castle does want, but this castle hasn't been built yet. But if there was a castle that was on the board, and Jen had goods that the castle wanted, Jen could sell those goods to the castle to convert them into money, which is points at the end of the game. And, so, there are no castles, so Jen's going to skip that part. And now the last thing is, um, Jen, in the same way that you saw that I put my worker out here, but then I kind of jettisoned him to come over here to, to lay claim to this, Jen can do the same thing with discs. Um, because, again, if we look over here, if anybody has claim to one barren space, two uh, crags, which Jen could have done. Jen could have said, instead of claiming this over here, she was claiming this, but to be able to leverage that, she would have had to be able to move forward. Um, let's see. she had one. She, on all her tiles, she had one crag. To, uh, you know, she could have claimed this, but she would have only been able to claim one of those crags, unless there was another crag. Nope. So Jen does not have the production she needs to claim two crags. Uh, but there is also the potential to claim two of these uh, fruitful areas. And Jen has claimed one of them. That happened as part of setup. If Jen can claim another one of these on her production track, she could then lock in these points the way I locked in those points. And you can see, as soon as Jen gets th access to three forests, and remember, she has access to one right now. As soon as she has access to three, she could use one of her discs and lock that in for three points. And again, once these have been locked in, that's it. So we're in a race to get access to three forests, or two churches, or three lakes, or one desolate area, etc., etc. So anyway, that was Jen's turn. She laid a tile. She uh, in cultivated some terrain. She didn't sell because there are no castles that have been built yet. That's still a ways off. And she did not. She didn't have access to be able to lock in any of these. So that was the end of her turn. At the end of her turn, she draws another tile. And let's see. She got one of these crosses. A uh, lake. All right. See, her next step is. Well, that's interesting. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, I think Jen maybe is going to cultivate next turn as well. Or produce. Anyway, back to me. Back to my turn. And once again, I've got two tiles. I'm going to place one of them. And then I'm either going to do a disc action or a worker action. I'm going to produce or pilgrimage. Um, cultivate or... What's a C word for cutting a rug? For mo moving around the world. All right, anyway. So, both of these have bonus. I'll get a coin. I will get a free step of cultivation here. Which means I'll jump over, uh, which means I won't have to claim a hill that needs these crags. Also, if I build, if I build, if I build either of these, I have no choice. They have to extend the existing crag. So if I take this, it has to go there or there. If I do this, it has to go there or there. Now, if there were multiple crags, I could choose which crag to go on. But once a hill has been completed, and it doesn't have to all be crags. If a hill has been completed, if any of the four spaces have a crag on it, that means that castle immediately gets built there, and we start getting the opportunity to sell goods to those castles. So anyway, what am I going to do? And am I just going to do... I've got this cross. I could just keep on working that religion angle. Why not? I'm going to take this, and again, it's a... Cr mm. Ah, see, here's the problem. Here's the problem. I can take this. It's a crag. I could put it like this, let's say. This gives me one free step on my production. Jen, she took um, one, two, three steps. I'm just taking them slowly because I've got these bonus tiles. And we're about to build our first castle. And now, either I am going to claim one of these four hills to increase my production, or I'm going to put a worker out. I'm not excited about... I mean, I need sheep. I still don't have any sheep. And I'm trying to get those sheep. So I don't care. I'm going to put another one of my four remaining workers has to come here. Now, once again, I can now move my pilgrims around. I put him out there. I can move one because I've only got one on the board. If I hadn't claimed this, this guy would still be here. Let's say I hadn't claimed those two points because I was worried that Jen was going to lock in those two church points. I'd left him out here. If I have two workers, now he can stand back up, go back 
to the intersection he was at, or he can just stay here. He doesn't have to get up, but he could stand. And since I've got two, I could go one, two, and move this person up here. And, um, you know, this person could come over there, and this person could come over there. Now, um, you know, so, and the more workers you have on the board, the more you can move them around to try to get them into position to control. Because right now, ideally, I'd like to have two workers. Because, hey, I've got this guy who's got access to that cross. This one has access to two churches. And that means I'd move up three more steps, which would go one, two, three. I'd almost be up to two points in religion. Now, I can't do this because I made this guy go away, and I locked those two points in. This guy came in. He can move one intersection, because I've only got one worker on the board. Let's have him come on ahead and go over here. And now, once they're done moving, they can occupy any of the adjacent hills. I'll just have him slide on over here and occupy that hill. And once again, I go one, two. So this is a lot of work. So far, I've only made one point, but eventually I'll get to two and then three and so on. And I can get all the way up to eight points if I can really keep pushing that. Okay, so I moved around. I claimed a hill. I moved up on some religion. And... Well, I can't claim this again, so my turn is done. And now that this guy is left here, if Jen ever wants to get a worker and put it in there so that she can start working up the religion track that I helped develop, well, she'd have to pay dearly. She would have to pay one victory point's worth of coins. She would need five of these to be able to move in here to start working now that I kind of own this area. But Jen's okay with that. She's all about that production, yo. She's completely eschewing religion to actually try to make a living um, cultivating goods and selling them to castles. Because we're about to have a castle built. Anyway, so that was my second turn. And then I get another tile. And by the way, this is the timer of the game. This game is going to last for exactly 10 rounds. Because 20 tiles, including the ones we're in our hands, were um, picked randomly from all the tiles that come with the game. So, there are... A whole bunch of tiles we're not going to be seeing in this game. So, all right, that was my second turn. It is now Jen's second turn. And, interestingly, Jen doesn't have any crags. So she's allowed to put her tile wherever she wants. Although, if she puts something here like this, remember, because this is filled up, immediately the first castle, uh, uh, Sortella, Sortella, would appear here. And now it's open for business trying to buy these resources. Which it just so happens Jen is trying to produce. So that's an interesting consideration. So what does Jen want to do? If she's going to want to do more production, she's going to want to be able to claim a hill that has, um, you know, th th this, uh, what do you call it? Um, oh, I, where is it? Uh, you know, th uh, this right here. You know, these types of trees that produce acorns, nuts of some sort. Uh, so Jen's going to want to put a tile down or she, that, that produces this. And produces this, because if she can claim a hill that produces this and this, she will in one turn. She'll go up here. This has already been claimed, so she'll jump here for free. And then she'll jump here, and she might be able to jump up even more. So, can she put down a tile that would give her access to this, this, and this? Let's see. Well, okay. There is none of just the, the empty green pasture. So, she's not going to be able to make that jump. But she does have this. And, and, and oh, oh, yeah, mm, yes. So, if Jen goes like this, let's say. So Jen went like that. Now, neither of her tiles gave her any bonus. The tiles that have crags also give bonuses. So Jen didn't get a bonus this round. She's coming here. And so now, again, Jen could put her first person here, which means she can move to here or here or stay here, and then lay claim to a field for the purposes of trying to get some religious points and trying to lock in uh, these terrain. But that's not what Jen's doing. Jen says, hey, I claim, I claim this uh, hill, and this is a completed hill, which means Jen gets access to all four of these. And so let's see how that works out. First of all, Jen gets access to that, boom. Because she already previously did a temporary claim, boom. She's now got a permanent claim on those trees. And now I should say, by the way, when I say claim, it's just that Jen has cultivated. She's cultivating this land. She previously cultivated this land. I can still cultivate this land as well. If I come along later and do something like this and say, hey, I want to claim this hill, I can also lay claim to this terrain. Um, it, it's not like Jen has ownership. I mean, I've got kind of ownership of this, but anybody can cultivate the land. So anyway, so Jen has now uh, finished cultivating what she started. And hey, in this hill, they've got these nuts. Boom, she just jumped up there. And now, well, if... If uh, there were any um, of her tiles that needed lake, Jen could claim those too. She doesn't have any more, but remember, Jen could extend anytime she wants. Here's her other two. She doesn't have a lake! 
Oh, that's a bum er. All right. Because if she, uh, you know, if either one of her other tiles, which by the way came out randomly as part of setup, she got these, she would go on ahead and lay one of these down so she could um, uh, lay claim to that lake. But as it is, uh, she cannot. Um, there are ways to be able to get more of these tiles so you have even more flexibility than the four you started with. As you can see, there are plenty with lakes, but unfortunately, Jen cannot really make use of that lake. But she did put these down to make the next two jumps forward on her production. And um, then remember, after you do that, if there are any castles and you want to sell some stuff, you can sell it for coins, i.e. points, and then you can lock in. So, what does Jen have access to now? She still has no, she hasn't cultivated any barren area. She hasn't cultivated any crags. So she'll move her over here. She um, has still only cultivated one of these. Once she cultivates a second, she could lock that in and lock those two points in. She still only cultivated one forest, uh, none of these, no lakes, uh, four of any one type. Has she done four of any one type? No. That's a single, that's a single, 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 single. She's done a bunch of singles. She hasn't done multiples of anything. So those could be things that she is eyeing for. And remember, Jen can be planning out how she's going to advance this anytime she wants. It's not until this thing moves forward that the new one gets locked into place. Okay, so that was Jen's turn. She draws another tile. And okay, she get a half coin off of this. And I wish I'd drawn that tile. And Jen doesn't know I want that tile. But once Jen puts it into play, I might be starting to try to claim them sheep. Because as you can see, I need those sheep for my next step of cultivation. Okay, my turn. What am I going to play? Um, let's see. I can play this anywhere because there's no crag. If I play this, I must go like this. Which means I will build the first... Um, yeah. Oh, and that's really nice. Um, that works out pretty well for me, I think. I think. If I want to do this. First of all, I'll get a half a coin. And, I could, and the castle will come out. And now, unfortunately, there are no sheep here. But let's see, what are my future cultivation options? Do I I have, so I can put this down because, hey, I got some crags. Or actually, well, that won't be the case because this is going to get covered up. So if I put this like here, this is going to be covered up. And if I want to do production, I could claim this hill, this hill, or this hill. None of which have, but I mean, again, I can get another worker on the board and start claiming more terrain. And yeah, I'm going to do that. I'm going to build this. And uh, first of all, -doo 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 -doo, we've got our first castle, Sortella. And they are open for business. They want both of these. And um, oh, let's not forget, I got a half coin. Okay, once I get five of those, that's a point. And you can actually trade them in for these beautiful golden coins if you want, although it's not necessary. Same th diff. And I have to choose. I've placed my tile. Am I going to increase my production? I probably would if I were getting some sheep out of it. But I don't have any sheep. But I might still want to do it anyway. Because remember, I could say, hey, I'm going to claim this area right here, which means, I'm sure I probably have one, and I could say I'm going to go like this, which means I could make a future cultivation claim against this type of terrain, which I'll, I'll, I'll get later. And hey, there's a tree, by the way. Oh, I could potentially, anyway. So that's, I could do that. And the reason I would do that is not because I care about this so much, but because I've got this grain. This castle wants this grain. Once somebody sells castle the grain to the castle, that's it. It's done. Everything in this game is first come, first serve. Once you lock those in, those are your points. Once you lock this in, that's your money. So I've just created a castle. I can see that Jen can sell this grain here. She can also sell the, uh, the pine trees. Me, I could sell the grain. Although, man, if I could go longer, I could get to where I could sell two grain. That would be awesome. So if I do production right now, I'm not going to be getting much out of it because these hills aren't great, but I will be able to sell to the castle and make some money, i.e. points. Now, instead of that, though, I could say to heck with it, I just did this so I could get the uh, fifth of a point and I could keep on working. I could do another pilgrimage turn, which again means put somebody here. And now that I've got two guys on the board, I talked about this before, I can do up to two movement. I could have him come here and here. I could go here, here. Um, but wherever he ends up, he could then... Um, so I could go here, here, slide him on down. And now I've got a guy on a hill with a cross and a guy with two churches. And that means I would move up one, two, three, and I've gotten into the level two, two points of religion. And I've got them. And uh, so I could do that. And then you can see there's another hill over here, which if I could get that, 
Then, I mean, this becomes like a little religious age. If I got all these pilgrims praying at these areas, that's one, two, three, four I'm moving up every turn. And this could be my main focus, is getting points from there. Instead of production, in uh, you know, increasing my production, or instead of claiming territory. So, am I going to do that? I think I could sell, but nah, I'm all about that religion. So, he came in here. I can move him. I don't have to move him at all. Um, because I could just say, hey, he's just going to stand still. He's going to slide down here. And now he has access to this hill, which has, you know, anywhere in the hill, for every religious monument there is, there's one, two, three. I just went up one, two, three. Okay. And that was my turn. And then I draw another tile. And I want to see those sh sheep. Sweet sheep. Oh, baba time. Okay. But anyway, back to Jen. And Jen's like, yes. She is definitely going to do some production so she can sell here. But, if possible, it would certainly be good to be able to sell multiples of these instead of just one. Right now she has access to one of the pine trees and one of the grain. Again, I'm not quite sure that's what those icons are, but that's what I'm saying they are. And, that, and this castle wants both of those. By the way, we can also see the next castle wants meat and wine. So, that's something to bear in mind as well. So Jen probably wants to increase her production such that she's producing more of what this castle wants. And that's where this tile comes in. Oh yeah, she's going to play this one. And now, um, so this has a crag, but since there are no crags, she can put this wherever she wants. She's going to get a half a coin. And, right, so her next step is she wants this sweet uh, naked pasture. And she wants to put this in a way like if she does, uh, or if she does this, let's say, and claims this hill, then she's got her next two steps covered. And then she, I mean, during production, you can't produce out of a house, so this is a place that you could lay claim with a with a person. So Jen could do that. But Jen wants to claim a hill that has this because she's planning on selling to the castle this turn. So I think with that in mind, Jen will go. Like, uh, like this. There we go. All right, so there we go. So Jen got her coin, and she says, I could claim this hill, this hill, this hill, which just has one production, which would get her one step forward, or this hill, which produces three things. Although remember, oh, right, that's right. Jen had no lakes. So Jen doesn't want that one. Jen's got, all right, what else could she do? She could come down here, but then it's a house. Urgh! Drat, 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 drat. Okay, she'll just stick like this one. Yeah, what was it? It was like these, like these. All right. So Jen can claim all three of these. Uh, first of all, well, for, unfortunately, though, since she didn't claim this, she can't move forward. So she will put a temporary hold on the desolated area. She will then put, um, let's see, what will she put out here? She's extending her line. This is her last um, grain, I think. Yeah, it is. So she'll go ahead and put this one out. There we go. And uh, she will put a temporary hold on that as well. So she uh, has cultivated this. She's cultivated this. She still has no means of cultivating. This is the second time uh, that lake's been no good for her. And um, that's that. So Jen has moved up. She was kind of stuck. She couldn't get past her main one, so she can't lock in permanent. But she's got temporary for two different things. Now if Jen wants, Jen can sell. And Jen is going to. Uh, they, they want the pine trees, they want the uh, acorns, or you know, whatever the wheat is. Jen says, I'm going to sell wheat. She's going to sell this one, and if she wants to, she can sell this one as well. Which means she would take this, she's lost it, she still, this is permanent, she can never lose this. This was temporary, since she has not locked it in yet, that means right now Jen has to take this, so she's lost the stuff. She puts it here, and she is, um, she is selling one, two. Right, where was she? She was... Here, wasn't she? Yeah, she was. So, she's, so, she's selling two grain to that castle. And what does she get? She gets two times the number of buildings that are fed. Which could have been better. Um, the number of buildings that are fed are one, the castle itself. Two, this house over here. And three, this military camp. So, one, two, three buildings fed two each means Jen just got six half coins. Or, also known, a gold coin, because that's five, and another. So, Jen just basically got a point 
worth of coins, which she could use that point to move into my area now and all of that. And she has locked this in. Now, this castle could have been more fruitful. If, they, if we had developed it so there were more buildings on the outskirts, it would have bought more stuff. If Jen had waited to sell until she had, say, three total grain instead of two, it would have been three times the number of buildings, etc., etc. But Jen figured she better grab while the grabbing is good, because she can see, I have grain too. I could have also sold to this. So anyway, so that was Jen's turn. She made some money, and now, once again, based on what she has access to, she could lock some stuff in. Remember how Jen said, hey, she just uh, developed this barren stuff? She has not locked it in yet, because she hasn't moved up far enough. But she's got the temporary. She'll take that and say, yeah, I have... Uh, Jen is claiming this. She just scored another point. Which means now she has to um, develop it again. She has to cultivate that type of thing again to be able to move forward. But in the meantime, Jen just scored two points. One, two, and lock both those in so I can never get to them. And remember, this... Now that this is free, now that there's nothing on here, this is free. Jen could change it. She could reprogram her future production line. She could even, if she wants to, if this was still here, if Jen wanted to, she could reprogram anyway, but she'd be throwing this grain away. But instead, Jen sold that grain, which means this wasn't locked in anymore, and so Jen could change her production methodology later on down the game. So, uh, that was it. Jen has now locked in one of those as well. She draws another tile. It's uh, another half coin. And it is my turn. And I, well... I was worried that if I didn't sell those uh, acorns... I mean, I could have gotten three half coins if I had sold my one acorn, and I wouldn't even have lost it. But this is what I've been waiting for, folks. The sweet, sweet sheep. Because remember, I've got the secret goal of having more sheep production than anybody else, which is worth two points. Right now, um, there's also the public goal of having most wheat production, which we're tied. We both have one. I'm winning this one because I've got more pilgrims on the crosses than anybody else, so I've got that one locked up. Nobody has put anybody on castles, and the game continues. Now, remember, I've talked about how, you know, have you seen my guys moving around? I moved them into these religious hills. They can also move into the castle, which means they don't really do much for you, but there is five points to be had at the game for whoever has the most of their pilgrims in actual castles. So that's something to bear in mind for the end of the game as well. That could be a huge swinger. All righty. Um, so, I think I would like to get these, uh, sheep going. And if I do something, say, like, oh, oh, there's a crag here. Oh, look at this, which means if I play this, I'm going to get my sheep production up anyway. But remember, I could program my next step to be more sheep. And I could claim, all right, the crag would have to come up here, right? It'd have to be there or there. And this other one doesn't have any sheep. But yeah, I mean, it's all about... That secret sheep goal I'm going for. So I'm going to do this. I'll put it like... Oh. Right, now I'll put it like that. Although that's kind of a bummer. I don't want to do this. I want to put another cross or another church over in this hill so that this guy is doing more worship. I also want to put more crosses and more churches over in this hill so this guy is doing more worship. So yeah, actually... But I have to put this over here. I'd like to put this church over here with the other churches. But this crag means I must build it over there. Drat. Ugh. Okay. But can I? Yes, I can't. No. <sighs> yeah, crag has to touch. So I cannot get this church in like this, let's say. Because then this guy would be worshiping at the church. And that'd be a bummer. All right. 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 Let's go on ahead and uh, put it like that, let's say. Okay. Okay, so. Because I did a crag thing, I moved up one, and now... Oh, oh, oh! Let's No, let's say I went like this. This is better, this is better. Yeah, this is better. There we go. Although, I'm, I've completely enclosed this hill. No more religious stuff can happen in this hill now. Although this guy, for all intents and purposes, has access to a house, which, remember, two uh, houses, or, oh, I could give him up anytime I want to lock a point in, because he could say, oh, this was the guy who had access to one house. But as long as he stays out here, and as long as Jen doesn't have access to houses, he's also passively praying, and later on in the game, I could lock him in for that point. As long as Jen leaves that to me. But anyway, so I've, I've expanded this. This hill is complete. Nothing else can be put in there. And I could put another worker out here. And then I got three, so I could move up to three times. But I'm going to do my first production. 
which means I'm producing off of this hill. And hey, 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 look at that. There's some sheep. And hey, there's some verdant fields. Boom. And then, hey, here's a coin. And then, hey, oh, there's no lake here. So I have to stop. Uh, and in fact, that's it. I got both of these, and I've moved up quite a bit. I'm actually now farther on my production than Jen is. But that's because she grabbed that temporary production where I've locked in a bunch of permanent production. Noise, 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 noise. Okay, so I, I, I did all that cultivating to increase my production. I have access now to two sheep, which, um, and a one field, although I need access to three. I have access to one crag, but I need access to two. Um, I still, I can't sell any of these pines because I don't have any of those. So, and, um, I would, if I get one more crag on my line, I could lock these two points in. Right. Okay. So, uh, that was it. I am not going to snag any of those. I am done. I draw another tile. Boom. More sheepy sheep. And I've forgotten. What is Jen? Oh, Jen wants this barren terrain. So, it is Jen's turn. And if she if she does this one, she has to go here or here because crags have to go adjacent, and that means this will be almost done as well. Although if Jen is doing this, she could still do this. Remember, when a hill is completed, only one of them has to be a crag, and that means the next castle will be built and you know is open for business. And Jen should be thinking: Does she want to sell to that castle? Well, she doesn't have access to any meat production or any wine production. So she doesn't care about that. But I mean, she could start getting in on the ground floor of that. If she wants to, she does want control over these barren zones. She knows there's um, two half coins, which is a uh, two-fifths of a point, and a point for having that at the end of the game. And here's one that she could get built. And it'd be nice to do it. Uh, oh, there's one already right here. What was the other thing she had? Nope. Yeah, if she had this type of terrain, she'd probably put it like this. You know, say this was like the, uh, say this wasn't, this was just empty terrain. She'd go like this. She'd claim this hill. That would get her two more production and potentially even more because she's still got her other things that she's yet to lock into place. But unfortunately, she so she is stuck on that. Totally stuck on that. But remember, she still got discs, so she could put stuff down and get temporary access to what's next. I mean, what else would she want if she? Right. So, oh yeah, she'd get the desolate, um, which is good. And she's already locked one in. She'd get it again, basically. And, oh, there's more acorns, but the acorns have already been sold. Ooh. Yeah, Jen, you know, thinking about what she might produce in the future, she could say, do something like this. I mean, come way up here and then claim this hill. And that means she'd say, hey, I'm taking a temporary claim of this. And um, I'm also... She could lock this in and say, I'm taking temporary claim of this because hooray, um, because she knows the next castle is going to want some of that olive oil or wine or whatever it is. And so she could be setting herself up for the future when that next castle comes into play. So that's a possibility. But that's only getting two things. Is there some place better she could go? Again, she could come down here, which gets her, well, I mean, she doesn't have to go like that. I mean, heck, she could go like this, let's say. And she could go like this, let's say. And then she said, hey, I'm getting I'm getting control of this. I'm getting control of this. And I'm getting control of this. So she's getting a lot. And now she, these are not locked. She could change these later on. She just needs to get this because as soon as she gets here, she just gets a jump. And, um, and so she could make a big leapfrog to give herself a lot of production um, to be able to sell as the castles start coming into play. With this... She would be, I mean, you know, by, by coming here again, she'd be claiming that, that, and that. Still no lakes because she doesn't have it. Um, and, interestingly, she would have no more discs. That is interesting, though. I mean, sooner or later, she's going to get a terrain. Although, you know, I mean, or sooner or later, if she doesn't get the terrain, I will put the Now, unfortunately, this is the only one that's come out so far, and it's in an area that's completely cut off. So Jen can't get that. But, you know, there will be tiles that come out that let her get past these. And there already are these, and Jen knows there's these. And so Jen, she could just set herself up for a long-term thing. That's really interesting. She's not doing much in the short term. Although, remember, she has access to these in case a castle came up that wanted this. Or, I mean, oh, she has access to two. She could sell both of these and um, get six more coins or six more half coins. Yeah. Okay, Jen's doing it. So, uh, she did that. 
she unfortunately it's all temporary all these uh because you can't get the real stuff because this is you know if you think of her overall production chain she can't make permanent advancements on her production chain until she gets one of these green fields and so far the only one in the game was the one under here no there wasn't the only one in the game is cut off to her. She'll get there eventually, though. So, But she will temporarily lock in all these other ones, thereby tying up all her discs. But not for long. Because now, Jen's going to sell to the castle again. She's got one... Where's the other one? Two pine trees? Which means she just got two times three. She just got more coins. Okay. So there we go. And Jen's still got these others that she can lock into place eventually. And that was it. And she draws... Not what she was looking for. Okay, and then back to me. Righty, righty, roo. And I think I'm going to stop right there, folks. Sorry, that was a bit abrupt. But hopefully by now you should have a pretty good idea of how Six Castles works. And if you want to hear Jen's and my final opinions about it, you can hit that I in the top right corner screen or follow the show notes in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1.